and our doing arises out of and reveals our being who we are. How we see ourselves, one another, and the world. Being and doing are intimately connected. Wishing that we could do things differently and a deeper wish to be a different creation is really the wish for the first day. Think about with me this morning some of your first days. The first day as a married person. The first day as a parent. The first day of that job or vocation that you had been waiting for and working towards. The first day you took seriously as a matter of life and death your faith. The first days are filled with light. They hold the promise of all that might be. There is an excitement, a newness, an innocence of first days. First days are vibrant and alive, full of dreams and possibilities. I imagine that that is how God looked at the first day, in the beginning. No harsh words had been spoken. No feelings had been hurt. No relationships had been broken. There was no guilt or regret. There was only light. The light of life, the light of love, the light of promise and hope, the light of God. And it was good. The first day is always a day of creation. Sometimes in my work with people, someone will say, oh, pastor, I wish I could go back and dot, dot, dot. Or a couple that's been married would say, we want to go back to the day when our marriage was dot, dot, dot. They're all looking for the first day. We cannot go back to the way it was. First day wishing however, is not really about turning back time. First day wishing is about becoming a new creation, a new being. Ultimately, it is about returning to the waters of Jesus' baptism. Every time we return to the baptismal waters, <coughs> we return to the first day. You see, creation and baptism cannot be separated. They are intimately connected and they mirror each other. Listen to what Genesis says and how Mark describes Jesus' baptism. In the beginning, a wind or a breath or a spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. At Jesus' baptism, the spirit or the breath or wind 
of God descended on Jesus as he came up out of the water. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. At Jesus' baptism, God said, you are my son, the beloved. In the beginning, God saw that the light was good. At Jesus' baptism, God was well pleased. Creation and Jesus' baptism are God's gift to humanity. Everything God does is for humanity. Jesus did not need to be baptized. We needed him to be baptized. The baptismal waters did not sanctify Jesus. Jesus sanctified the baptismal waters. His baptism is not the means by which we identify with him, but the means by which he identifies with us. Our baptism allows us to participate in his baptism. Through Jesus, our humanity was present and baptized in his baptism. <coughs> our humanity was the humanity upon which the Spirit descended. Our humanity was the humanity to whom God the Father spoke and said, I am well pleased. Our humanity was recreated in Jesus' baptism. <coughs> it is the first day. In baptism, we are a new creation, a new being. And every time we return to the baptismal waters, we claim our identity in Jesus as beloved sons and daughters. Every time we return to the baptismal waters, God again manifests and reveals himself in humanity. Every time, every time <coughs> we return to the baptismal waters, we return to that first day of light and love and life and the promise of all that might be. Whatever your life has been or might be now, the baptismal waters await you. So return. Return to the water. Let the waters of God's life wash over you and rid you of fear and resentment and despair. Cannonball into the mercy of God. Immerse yourself into the waters of God's love. Splash in the waves of, deep, of the deep gift that God has given that we are all created in the image and likeness of God. Drift into the stillness of God's peace. These are the waters of new birth. So my friends, we are invited to come into the water. Because the water, it is fine. Amen. <laughs>